this facility is not just a heating plant or even just a combined heat and power plant. It really is an educational laboratory. So we do hope that this facility will be used by the community, by other students, by other community members as an educational tool to learn about renewable energy um, and to look at renewable energy choices. We believe that we will be able to demonstrate key principles about how you close the loop ecologically, how you reduce carbon emissions, what carbon neutrality is, and that these lessons will be great not just for our students, but for students in the surrounding communities. And we will certainly be inviting them in to uh, learn about what we're doing. So this is the central trip bin. This is where all of the chip deliveries for the biomass plant are gonna come. The chip bin is designed to hold about 18,000 cubic feet of chips, which equates to roughly four days worth of storage during peak operating conditions. Here we are on the other side of the chip bin. And on the other side of this steel partition here, we have all of the chips. The wedges move back and forth to move the chips from the chip bin into the boiler plant. They get dumped onto the conveyor that we're standing on top of. We're using waste heat that comes off of hot surfaces that's heating up the boiler plant itself that we would normally need a ventilation system to cool down to warm the chip in. So as the chips are dumped onto the conveyor, they're transported up to the screening system. And what the screening system does is it sorts out chips that are too big, aren't the correct size for use in the gasifier. So after the screening system, chips are dumped onto another conveyor and that conveyor takes them into the gasifier. Behind me we have the metering screws which meter the amount of chips and the rate of the chips are introduced into the gasifier system. Um, once in the gasifier the chips are baked to a temperature where wood gas is created. That wood gas is then transferred into the boiler where it's combusted to create steam. This is the same type of boiler that you would see in the central plant that's burning oil except in this instance we're burning wood gas. That wood gas is utilized to create high pressure steam. The process of investigating this plant actually started back in 2005. An honors seminar class started looking at energy usage on campus and decided that burning number six fuel oil was not the most sustainable way of heating. The class ended and the students formed a club that kept playing with these ideas over the course of the year. They had just put in place a student greening fund uh, in which the students allocate some of their student activities monies to accomplish sustainability projects. And this group of honors students got the student body to vote to spend 10,000 of their student activity fees to a feasibility study for converting to biomass. This is really a classic example of the students taking what they learned in the classroom, looking at alternative energy as a theoretical idea, and applying that to the campus where they spend their living and working hours. Sustainability education often starts by taking the college's or university's region and physical plant as the laboratory for uh, students to learn about how to create more sustainable organizations. And if the college campus is such a laboratory, the students are learning by seeing what we do, we have to set a high bar, a strong example for what it is to approach sustainability. So for that reason, higher education has a special responsibility and Green Mountain is a leader in trying to show how we can shoulder that responsibility.